hello friends we are beginning a overview on this topic newer antifungals uh, so this talk i gave in uh, gaziabad w4c conference uh, i think that's an iskon temple in gaziabad uh, so i had covered all these components of individual drugs separately so i have just collated all this and put it in this particular format uh, so will be useful this was i believe was a question in drnb as well Uh, so we talk now with my colleague dr pratibha who helped me develop this content uh, so the topics or the drugs that we would cover there are around six new antifungal drugs uh, so uh, quite a bit of a trunk which does uh, so but as we go through i think there is relevance uh, the the nature of the drug and the characteristics is embedded in the name so phos menogapix so just remember mano proteins uh, so this drug has a effect on mano protein that's why it's named as phos menogapix then rizofungin so rizofungin is a derivative of anidula fungin and i'm told this will come to india very soon ibrexa fungar it's similar to echinocandins uh, with a different binding site and olorafim as the name sounds remember it as it's only oral drug there is no iv formulation so olorafim uh, is another interesting drug opelconazole i'm told it will come soon uh, at some stage mainly positioned as a nebulizer so this drug is mainly used as a nebulizer for lung conditions like uh, aspergillosis uh, as a drug uh, addition an adjunct drug or alternative drug to oriconazole because it's more potent to ori uh, oriconazole and in coagulated amphotericin b as the name sounds it's a derivative of amphotericin b and we'll talk about it so there are six new antifungals none of them are available in india as of now but rizafungin would soon be made available any time opelconazole is something that we are looking up to other drugs we aren't sure but there are few trials that are happening so phos menogapix very interesting very innovative drug so how does it act so mechanism of action is it's a pro drug like colestin so but in the presence of systemic phosphatase phos menogapix is converted to menogapix which is the active moiety so in a fungus there is this enzyme reaction inositol is converted to gpi which is glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol by this enzyme gwt1 enzyme so this particular gpi as the name sounds it anchors the mano proteins so mano proteins are needed for the functioning or maintaining the structural characteristic of the fungus mano proteins are needed all these red dots that you see or mano proteins which are present on the fungal cell wall which help binding of the fungi to the cell so this is mano protein all the red dots are mano proteins and your mano gapix inhibits this enzyme so that this mano proteins are not formed and the binding of the fungus to the cell does not happen so that is the primary mechanism so the trafficking of mano proteins uh, helping the fungi to get attached to the cell is inhibited by phos menogapix so if you see this very nice diagram so the fungi is devoid of this red dot which are mano proteins and the fungi gets deformed and it cannot anchor itself and it cannot attach to the cells uh, to gain entry and cause the problem so very interesting novel mechanism how phos menogapix works so spectrum of activity uh, this is how the candida looks it acts against the candida albicans oris glabrata and this is how the cryptococcus looks it acts against cryptococcus it acts against aspergillus it acts against fusarium it acts against coccidiodes and it acts against lomentospora proliferans so this is the spectrum so the context why we need new antifungals is right now we have azoles then we have echinocandins then we have sterols and uh, each one have unique character effectiveness against certain group of fungi but we don't have one drug which covers molds and which covers mucorails and which covers uh, aspergillus and which covers candida species so we do not have one drug so if you look at this drug it can it covers candida and cryptococcus right now the only drug we have is amphotericin so this covers cryptococcus aspergillus and molds so i think this is how we are looking at the future of antifungal agents but it does not have effectivity against candida cruzi and like in antibiotics we say minimum inhibitory concentration for this phos menogapix it's called minimum effective concentration because it does not inhibit it deforms the fungi and and uh, it prevents it from binding to the cell 
by depleting it of manoproteins. So that's why it is uh, described as lowest concentration, minimum effective concentration at which it can prevent the fungi from anchoring to the cell and gaining entry. So that, and the, there are phase one and phase two trials. It is shown to be a safe drug with not many adverse effects. There is no nephrotoxicity. The dosage is one gram IV twice a daily, followed by 600 mg IV once daily for two days, followed by 800 mg orally once a day. So this is the dosage of phosphenogapix. And uh, the initial phase one and phase two trials have shown 80% success rates. And it is shown to have a synergy with amphotericin B uh, and can be used as a combination in difficult to treat sort of a fungal infections. So what are the studies that are ongoing? Because I said this is not available in India yet. So there is EPEC study where phosphonogapix is being used against Candida auris and that's how Candida auris looks. Then there is an Aegis study where they're using phosphonogapix against other molds like Aspergillus, Fusarium and Mucorils, Mucormycosis. So this study is being done called Aegis study where phosphonogapix. So that's the beauty of this drug. It has effectiveness against Candida species and non-Candida species. And FDA is intending to fast track these studies so that this could be come into the market and this could be used to save lives. So that's about phosphonogapix. So remember manoproteins. So it has effectiveness against preventing anchoring of manoproteins and 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 uh, preventing the fungi to anchor itself to the cell wall by deforming it and changing the morphology. So Riza fungin, remember as it's a derivative of Anidula fungin and this is going to come to India very soon. So Anidula fungin, they do this structural alteration with Hemi aminal hydroxyl group is replaced with a choline aminal ester, which leads to Riza fungin. So it's a derivative of anidola fungin. But the beauty of this drug is by doing this change or the structural change, the half life is enormously increased to a point that this is a drug positioned to be used once a week uh, so that the compliance for antifungal agents become much more better. It has a longer half life. The mean half life with first dose is 80 hours, with second dose is 150 hours. So, which means it can be positioned as a weekly administration of this particular drug. And like echinocandins, all echinocandins act by inhibiting beta-1 glucan synthase. So, this drug also acts by inhibiting beta-1 glucan synthase, which is needed as a for the cell wall synthesis. So, it is useful for the synth synthesis of beta-1,3 glucan, which are needed for the fungal cell wall synthesis. Spectrum of activity, it is effective against candida. Cryptococcus, Aspergillus, Trichosporon, and Rhodoturula. This is the spectrum of activity. The dosage of Rizafungin is 400 mg loading dose, followed by 200 mg once daily, similar to Echinocandins. And phase, there are many trials with Rizafungin. So, the phase two trials are the STRIVE study and RADIANT study, which have found this drug is safe. They have done in 151 patients and they found adverse events are less severe hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, fever, and some diarrhea vomiting and anemia. So these are the side effects that this drug has had. Like any other drug, no sinister side effects. So when you talk about the STRIVE trial, so this was done in 207 patients by the US and the Spanish group in invasive fungal candidates in 207 patients and it was found to be safe. Ongoing study or the RESPECT study being done in invasive candidiasis. There are two RESTORE studies. There's one RESTORE study which is being done in HIV patients against pneumocystis. So right now, the drug available for pneumocystis is only one, which is sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim. So this drug is possibly effective against even PCP, pneumocystis gerovishi, where rizafungin with trimethoprim is used along, uh, is compared with trimethoprim to see its effectiveness. So the RESPECT trial, which was done by European and US group, was done in 462 patients. So results are awaited as a prophylaxis they have used. There's another RESTORE study done in 199 invasive candidiasis and Rizafungin was found to be non-inferior. So these are the available studies so far and uh, this holds promise as once a week drug. That is the beauty of this and it's going to come to India very soon by one of the company. So I think it will be interesting to uh, look at this drug. So now we'll look at Ibrexa funga. Ibrexa funga is also similar to echinocandines, but the binding of this particular drug in its ability to inhibit beta-1 glucan synthase is different. The binding site is different to echinocandins. So this, is, this particular molecule is Ibrexa fungi, this dark brown one. So it basically inhibits beta-1 glucan synthase. This light one is the beta-1 glucan synthase. 
which is which produces beta 1 glucans which is the building blocks of the fungal cell wall it's just a different pictorial representation but the binding site is different to echinokinase so ibraxa fungar is fungicidal but it is fungistatic fungicidal for candida but fungistatic for aspergillus 99% is protein bound and uh, bioavailability is 35 to 50% it inhibits these enzymes, uh, cytochrome 3, 2C8 and P3A4. Peak concentration is 4 to 6 hours. Half-life is very long, 20 to 30 hours. So, it's once a day. It's similar to echinokinase with a different binding site. Remember that way, once a day dosing. So, spectrum of activity is azole-resistant candida, echinocandin resistant candida and aspergillus. So, phase 1 and phase 2 trials have shown non-serious adverse events. So, the trials that are undergoing is FURY trial, where they have done interim analysis and they have found 56% of the patients with fungal infections had partial or complete response, but 15% did not respond. They continue to have progressive disease. There is a Skinergia trial where Ibrexa fungar, along with Isovaconazole is looked at uh, against Aspergillus uh, for its efficacy and safety. So, that is the information that we have at this point of time. So, the potential indication is to think of using, see, right now, the drug of choice for candida oris is echinocandin. So, Ibrexa fungar is a type of echinocandin, but a different binding site. So, it is being used, it's pitted against candida oris or azole resistant mold infections along with amphotericin B or prophylaxis for candida and prophylaxis for aspergillus. So, that's, that's the information that we have with regards to Ibrexa fungar. Olorofim. It's a very interesting drug, as I said, as the name sounds, it's an oral drug. It does not have IV formulation. This is the chemical structure. The mechanism of action is very interesting. So, we spoke about drug that inhibits beta-1,3 glucan synthase. So, this particular drug prevents the formation of this enzyme itself. Because for this enzyme, you need pyrimidine sugars. So, it inhibits the production of pyrimidine sugars, which are needed for the production of this enzyme. So, it acts at that level. So, basically, there is a fourth step in the pyrimidine, synth pyrimidine synthesis uh, where there is catalysis of this uh, dihydroxy orate dehydrogenase. And uh, this fourth step of pyrimidine produces uh, uridine monophosphate and uridine triphosphate, which, which are the UDP sugars. And these sugars are needed for production of beta-1,3 glucan synthase and chitin synthase. So, basically, your oral orofim inhibits this particular pathway so that the UDP sugars are not generated or not formed, which are needed for synthesis of beta-1,3 glucan synthase. So that's a very beautiful mechanism. And all this is happening at the mitochondrial. So olorofim acts at the mitochondria in the uh, fungi and prevents the formation of UDP sugars, which are needed for the production of beta-1,3 glucan synthase. Spectrum of activity is aspergillus, lomentophora, prolificans, coccidiotes, but it has, unfortunately, does not have effect against the yeast and does not have, have effectiveness against mucorils. So, efficacy, there's not much published data on this on clinical efficacy. So, ID uh, proposition on its effectiveness is against aspergillus, schedosporium, lomentospora prolificans, coccidiotes, and fusariosis and scopuloriosis. That's how the fungus looks. So, the formula OLS is the study that is happening to look at effectiveness of olorofim against all these fungi which are resistance to available antifungal drugs there is another study called OAC study where they are comparing olorofim with lipotrocin amphotericin b against aspergillus so this is the data that we have with regards to olorofim as i said it's an oral drug that is a disadvantage so it can be used as a oral step down for mold infections there is no iv formulation so that limits its usage as the first line drug for aspergillus so, side effects is increased aminotransferase, some vomiting and some diarrhea. So, that's a, that's the information. So, olorofim could be thought of like a posaconazole as a step-down drug for the mold infections where it uh, inhibits the production of pyrimidine sugars or the UDP sugars which are needed for beta-1,3 glucan synthase. And as a first line, may not hold promise because it is available as of now only oral, but it is shown to have good effectiveness against all those uh, non-conventional fungal infections which are resistance to conventional antifungal drugs. If you remember that, that should be good enough. So coming to the last one, last but one, which is opelconazole. As I said, this also may see the entry. This may be a good alternative for voriconazole because it's coming as an inhaler. Uh, so opelconazole is called PC943 triazole, coming, coming as an inhaler. 
using it as an inhaler, there is increased concentration of this drug in the lungs, which may be very effective for aspergillus, which tends to affect the lung, but low plasma concentration, and it can be used as prophylaxis in non-neutropenic patients. Spectrum of activity is Candidauris and aspergillus. And if you look at the potency, it is 2.5 times more potent than oriconazole for aspergillus, and it is equal in potency to posaconazole. So this is the potency, and there is reduced drug-to-drug -drug reaction, and safety, mild to moderate adverse events, some vomiting. Because you are giving as inhalation, it can cause some throat constriction and throat sort of a problems, throat itching or so on and so forth. Mainly constriction and suffocation or uh, is what has been mentioned in side effects and some fatigue and cough. So that, that's all we have about opel conazoles. Available more as a inhalational agent, more potent than oriconazole and could be a good drug for uh, aspergillus which tends to affect more of lungs and this can be a good alternate for oriconazole. So last one slide on nanocochleates or encochleated amphotericin B. Right now, when we talk about amphotericin, we have liposomal amphotericin B, we have amphotericin B colloidal dispersion and amphotericin B lipid emulsion, so AB LCD. So when you take all this, why we use this to reduce the toxicity? So encochleated amphotericin B, very interestingly, amphotericin B is wrapped in the lipid moiety and then it is delivered into the cell. So it is being marketed by Matinus Biopharma. Phase 2 trials have found it to be safe. Where do we use amphotericin as first choice? In cryptococcal meningitis. So it is phase 2 trials is found to be safe in cryptococcus. So as you see, uh, this violet thing is the amphotericin B, which is embedded or which is encased in the, in the polysaccharide serine sort of a lipid layer. So lipid uh, polysaccharide serine layer. And basically, when this molecule enters from high calcium to low calcium concentration in the macrophages, this amphotericin gets released from which is wrapped in the lipid layer so that the toxicity is completely minimized because there is a direct delivery of this molecule into the cell and the toxicity is significantly mitigated. So, encochleated is a very nice, novel, innovative concept where very cleverly amphotericin B is wrapped in the lipid moiety and gets released when this molecule enters from high uh, concentration to the low cal high calcium concentration to the low calcium concentration within the macrophage and this drug gets delivered into the cell so that is a very interesting aspect so summary of new antifungal agents remember rezafungin is a derivative of anidula fungin the key hallmark is it can be used one weekly because of a very prolonged half life opelconazole is another innovative drug that may be coming to the market soon mainly used as an inhaler and it holds promise for aspergillosis by direct delivery of the drug into the lung and could be a good alternative to oriconazole. Postmenogepics, as the name suggests, it helps in prevention of manoprotein anchoring and trafficking so that the attachment of fungus to the manoprotein receptors on the cell does not happen. And uh, it's a very innovative concept how uh, this uh, mechanism of action is by preventing the manoprotein anchorage to the cells and a novel antifungal. Olorafim, as the name sounds, it's an oral drug and as you remember, it uh, acts by preventing the UDP sugar formation which is needed for beta-1,3 gluten synthase. The disadvantage is, is only oral formulation and Ibrexa fungar is similar to echinocandin but the binding site is different and it holds some promise, alternate binding site and the last but not the least is the encoculated amphotericin B, very clever drug where amphotericin B is wrapped in the lipid molecule, polysaccharide, serine, sort of a lipid moiety, and it gets released into the macrophage when it enters from high calcium concentration to the low cancer. So this, this is the summary we have, friends, of the newer antifungal agents. So thank you, friends. Thank you, one and all. So request you all to submit your work to General of Acute Care. And you can, of course, visit my website to react to this lecture. Thank you. Thank you.